Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. We begin with coronavirus news. Bear County has added more than 1,000 new COVID-19 cases since last Sunday. 207 of those new cases were backlogged from September 15th to the 23rd. The total confirmed cases now stand at 58,184 since the pandemic started. There were also 16 new deaths this week. Remember, Metro Health is only reporting backlog deaths on Sundays. We'll have that total later on the night beat. The death toll now stands at 1,143. Meanwhile, taking a look at the hospitalization rate, 191 people remain in the hospital tonight with 81 in the ICU and 34 on ventilators. Meanwhile, 14% of staffed hospital beds are available. Let's break down those hospitalization rates for October 3rd compared to that same date in August and September. Those numbers on your screen right now. In August, the hospitalization rate was 858. It dropped to 323 in September. As for patients in the ICU, in August we had 350. In September, 155. And here's what it looked like for patients on ventilators. More than 200 in August and 87 in September. Metro Health says right now the risk level is low. Thanks to people wearing masks and washing their hands, leaders hope the public will continue to stay diligent. Taking a look now at other stories we're following for you this evening. A child is in the hospital in serious condition following a head on collision over on the southwest side. That crash happened just before four o'clock this morning at the intersection of Stony Brook Drive and Mary Oaks Drive. San Antonio police say the child's father fell asleep at the wheel and hit another vehicle that was turning left onto Stony Brook. The child suffered a head injury and was uh, transported to University Hospital. The child's father was arrested at the scene and now faces a DWI charge with a child passenger. San Antonio police looking for a suspect accused of stabbing a man last night. The incident happened around 1030 p.m. near I-35 and Riddiman Road in the parking lot of a Shell gas station. When officers got there, they found the man lying by a car wash with what police described to be a deep cut to the abdomen. He was taken to Bamsey in critical condition, serious condition rather. Tonight, President Donald Trump's doctors say his condition is improving with some ups and downs at Walter Reed Medical Center where he is being treated for COVID-19. However, there are mixed messages about the president's health with the president's own chief of staff telling reporters yesterday his condition is more serious than that was revealed by doctors. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest from Washington. Tonight, President Trump is said to be doing well at Walter Reed Medical Center after being admitted to the military hospital for COVID-19 on Friday evening. The White House releasing these photos of him working there Saturday. The president has continued to improve. As with any illness, there are frequent ups and downs over the course. The president himself addressing the American people from the hospital last night. I came here, wasn't feeling so well. I feel much better now. You don't know over the next period of a few days, I guess that's the real test. But there's confusion and many concerns over credibility with conflicting information being released about the president's condition. Just yesterday, leading physician Dr. Sean Conley appearing to dodge questions over whether the president received any supplemental oxygen. Today, Over the he said of this. His illness, the president has experienced two episodes of transient drops in his oxygen saturation. I recommended the president we try some supplemental oxygen. Stayed on that for about an hour. Dr. Conley says that happened Friday, but Probably when asked if the president was also on oxygen Saturday, he couldn't seem to recall. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to check with the nursing staff. He was then pressed about his discrepancies. I was trying to reflect the the uh, the upbeat attitude that the team. The president that his course of illness has had came off uh, that we were trying to hide something, which wasn't necessarily true. Dr. Conley says Trump has been taking the experimental drug remdesivir and has not had a fever since Friday morning, but it's still unclear exactly when and how the president was infected. A growing list of officials and advisors close to the president have contracted the virus. The latest, his personal assistant and body man, Nick Luna, seen here next to Hope Hicks without a mask boarding Air Force One one day before she tested positive. Eight others who attended last Saturday's Rose Garden ceremony for Trump's Supreme Court nominee infected too. Rena Roy, ABC News, Washington. Back here in Texas, friends, families and supporters of Vanessa Guillen celebrated her birthday with a march today. She would have been 21 this week. Family members who were at the event say it's been five months now since her passing and they are still waiting for justice. Guillen disappeared in April at Fort Hood 
Weeks later, her remains were found in a shallow grave 20 miles east of the base. Uh, one of her uh, murder suspects fatally shot himself after being identified as uh, being a participant in this. And the other is in custody and charged in her death. Well, if you are a veteran or active military, listen up. You're getting a special thank you from businesses participating in Freedom Day. That's this Thursday, October 8th. Here in our area, a dentist is shutting down his practice for the day to offer you free services. Alicia Barrera found out why it's important for the doctor to give back to those who serve. A special thank you is underway to our military. The first Freedom Day event took place more than seven years ago and continues to expand with the idea to provide free services, products, and goods to our troops. This year, Restoration Dental on the city's northwest side is joining the thank you movement for the first time. You'll come in as a patient, we'll take our radiographs, uh, we'll do an evaluation to see what type of cleaning you may need, and then we'll provide that cleaning for you. And then if you need any fillings or extractions or emergency base, and depending on time, uh, we'll try to do as much as we can for you within the means of the time allotted. Good morning, Megan, nice to meet you. Restoration Dental was one of many businesses forced to shut down due to COVID-19 precautions. They've since opened back up, and although the revenue is needed, Dr. Kai Mallerney says closing to the public this coming Thursday is well worth it. Well, being that we're in San Antonio and the community has really kind of invested in us, we want to give back. That's all it really comes down to. I mean, these members, men and women, do this on a daily. I think we can sacrifice one day. Dental services will be offered to veterans in the active military as well as their spouses and children. Plus, they'll be giving out prizes. This is our first time, but we're really excited to do it, so we're making an event out of it. We'll have a food truck from 12 to 2. Um, we're going to be giving away door prizes like an Apple iWatch um, and other good things. That was Alicia Barrera reporting. For details on how to make an appointment for the free dental service, just head to our website, ksat.com. Still ahead on the news at 530, hundreds of people are home now with a full stomach after a food giveaway downtown this morning. Why the event is more than what it seems. Welcome back. A local business owner is turning her bad hand dealt by the pandemic into a good thing for the San Antonio community. Today, there was a food giveaway at an empty lot of Broadway north of downtown near the San Antonio Zoo. But Shonda Robledo says people can expect so much more from that lot. Right now, she's finishing up the paperwork to create a farmer's market, community pantry, and cafe to help those affected by the pandemic. She says the idea came after her business was also affected. We started renting this lot, and a lot of our friends are in the food industry, and so they were hurting too, so we decided to turn the lot into a farmer's market. More than 600 free meals were given out today, provided by the Smoke Ring King. The first farmer's market for that site is planned for October 15th. Outside with live came in, as you saw there, plenty of sunshine again today. We did have a few clouds in the sky, but uh, still plenty of sunlight to warm us up. We're sitting at 88 degrees at the airport and some spots did touch the low 90s this afternoon, but still pretty comfortable because humidity on the manageable side. Checking on the aquifer, it is up two tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours and in your pollen count today. Mold is down to low status. Pigweed is low as well, but ragweed hanging tough. It's still moderate today with a count of 180. A look at your forecast for the week ahead coming up next. Well, if you have enjoyed the weather this weekend, I think you're going to like the weather coming up this week. We've got a pretty quiet stretch of weather ahead as we get into the upcoming work and school week, but it will feature some cool mornings, but warm afternoons, just like what we've seen the past several days. Uh, we do have some mischief brewing in the tropics. We had a little quiet stretch of weather as far as the tropics were concerned, but now things are starting to pick back up. Uh, we've got two tropical systems that we'll be monitoring this week. One is Tropical Storm Gamma. That's down near the Yucatan now. And then we've got a system out in the Caribbean that is expected to become Delta over the next couple of days. Technically not even a tropical depression yet, but strengthening and further organization is expected of that system down in the Caribbean. We'll start off with Gamma. As of 4 p.m., winds of 60 miles per hour. This is a tropical storm. Movement is stationary. And generally speaking, over the next several days, the system is going to move very slowly. It is expected to take a turn down to the southwest tomorrow through the middle of the week, drop down into the far southern Gulf of Mexico 
really more so the Bay of Campeche here, maintaining its tropical storm status and then a turn back off to the northwest expected the back half of this week. So that is gamma. We're also going to be watching what is being called now potential tropical cyclone 26. That's a mouthful, right? Well, basically the Hurricane Center has given it this title because they expect it to become a tropical depression and our next tropical storm within a couple of days. It's pretty inevitable at this point. Even by tomorrow afternoon, Forecast Track does have this system becoming our next tropical storm. And again, that would be Delta. Holding its tropical storm status until it gets into the Gulf could become a Category 2 hurricane later this week. This is Thursday, sitting in the central Gulf of Mexico and then a turn to the north toward the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama Gulf Coast expected later this week. So both of these systems you'll notice kind of head toward the western Gulf and then take a jog off to the north. So what's going on? Well, it's all the, the steering flow in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So what we have here Going into this week, we've got high pressure sitting off near Florida, north of the Caribbean there, and we've got a piece of low pressure or a trough uh, that is dropping down through Texas into Mexico. Winds around this low or counterclockwise, we've got clockwise winds around this high. So basically what's happening, we've got these two systems being squeezed here in the Gulf of Mexico, and generally the steering flow is what's going to take this, um, especially that second system, potential uh, tropical storm Delta, to the central Gulf Coast versus is being an issue for Texas. So at this time, neither of those tropical systems look like an issue for the Texas coast. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated. Here's what we are looking at here at home. Sunshine, low humidity heading into this week. Our mornings again will be pretty cool near 60 degrees to start, but then we'll make a big jump each day into the upper 80s and low 90s out there right now. We do have a few clouds generally north of the Highway 90 corridor. We've got some folks in the low 90s, 92 in Catula. 90 in Hondo, also 90 up the road in New Braunfels. So while it is warm, it's not too uncomfortable. Our dew points, low 60s, mid to upper 50s. So uh, the air is fairly dry, uh, and so it doesn't feel too uncomfortable out there this afternoon. This evening, mostly clear skies, temperatures falling through the 80s, eventually into the mid to upper 70s, and your day tomorrow kicking off the new week. Again, cool in the morning, 58, uh, up to the mid to upper 80s in the afternoon, and we are going to do that all over pretty much every day this week. So it would be nice to get uh, a little bit of rain here, but we'll take the, the quiet weather while we can get it. And we'll keep you updated on all things tropics uh, in the days ahead. Guys, not complaining about those mornings. Love it. Looks good. At the risk of having Jesse over here in the corner throw something at me, all I have to <laughs> say is, how about them Browns? You know what, Tim? You know it's 2020 when the Cleveland Browns look like a legit NFL franchise, but they almost gave it away. Coming up, two area guys help the Browns beat the Cowboys, plus UTSA running backs in Sear McCormick leads the FBS in yards rushing. Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cleveland at Dallas this afternoon was a wild game. Let's get right to it. First quarter, Dak Prescott throws to a wide open rookie, C.D. Lamb, for his first regular season touchdown, 37 yards, and we're tied at 7 all. Later in the quarter, same score. Dak threads the needle to Amari Cooper, 20 yards, and Dallas goes up 14 7. Dak passing for 502 yards today. Second frame, Cowboys down 21 14. Handoff goes to Ezekiel Elliott. He runs right, picks up 24 yards, and then coughs up the ball while being tackled. As he's taken down, Smithson Valley alum Andrew Sandejo rips the ball away, and Madison alum Vincent Taylor recovers the fumble. You know he is keeping that ball. Cleveland scored 24 points in the second to lead 31 14 in halftime, and they led 41 14 entering the fourth quarter. But Dallas fights back. Dak throws a fade to Lamb for a Cowboys touchdown, capping off 24 straight points. And Dallas is down 41-38 with 3.45 to go. Ensuing drive. Cleveland responds. Baker Mayfield flips the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. He avoids Alden Smith for a huge loss, then outruns the boys' D for a 50-yard touchdown. Amazing run. Now Dallas would block the extra point, and while fighting for the loose ball, it rolled into the end zone. Cleveland recovered it for a two-point conversion and a 49-38 lead. But the Browns would seal the deal by intercepting Dak Prescott inside the five. Game over. Cleveland beats Dallas 49-38, dropping the boys to 1-3. 
making the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, we keep hurting ourselves on offense, putting our defense in a bad, uh, bad spot, and uh, and that's that's what's and not starting fast enough, and that's what's uh, been killing us over the past few games. And once again, it's what hurt us tonight. And as you said, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely frustrating. It's just making the same mistakes over and over. Cleveland ends a four-game slide against Dallas, beating them for the first time since December of 1994. Things are even worse for the Houston Texans, who remain winless on the season, facing the Minnesota Vikings at NRG Stadium. Third quarter, Deshaun Watson fakes the handoff, then fires to Will Fuller the fifth for a touchdown. Texans trailed 17-13, and Watson rocking his air guitar after that. Fourth quarter, a buck 15 to go, Houston down eight, fourth and goal. Watson finds Fuller for what looks like a juggling touchdown catch, but after review, it was determined the ball hit the ground before before Fuller gained control, no touchdown. Vikings hold on 31-23, dropping Houston to 0-4. We never quit, but uh, so I think that's really good. I think we got a bunch of great guys, and we just got to figure out how to win a game. You know, we got down there, and we weren't able to get it in. Um, you know, the plays just didn't work. There was a few plays out there we wish we could have got back, um, especially making it close there at the end, uh, just to give us a chance to probably go into overtime. Um, but it's just frustration all around. But the thing is, we just got to stick together and keep pushing forward. Houston Chronicle sports columnist Jerome Solomon said the Texans are so bad, they should quarantine. Houston will host Jacksonville next Sunday. ESPN is reporting that the NFL and the NFL Players Association are investigating whether the Tennessee Titans violated the league's coronavirus-related protocols. The Titans had two more positive tests come back this morning, one player and one coach, increasing their total of positive tests to 20 members of the organization. The Titans are convinced, however, that they have obeyed the rules to protect the organization. UTSA sophomore running back Sincere McCormick leads the FBS with 527 yards rushing this season. He dropped 150 on UAB yesterday, averaging 6.8 yards per carry. It's his second 100-plus yard rush performance of the year and the fifth of his career. The Judson grade also scored his fourth rushing touchdown this season, second best on the team. Now, head coach Jeff Trailer said Sincere had extra fire this week while getting ready for the Blazers. During postgame, Sincere was asked why. I saw it myself um, pretty much. I just knew that I needed to get more in tune. I felt like the past couple of weeks that I, I haven't really been myself. Um, I kind of like talked to myself and, you know, prayed about it and continued to, to, to drill fire into my teammates not, um, and into myself to work more, do extra, do more than the next man, you know, out there. Um, you know, after practice, running constantly, um, preparing my body for the game, constantly preparing my mind for the game and continue to keep pushing and driving the whole entire time. Sincere and his O-line will face a stout run defense at number 15 BYU next Saturday. In three games this season, BYU has allowed 212 yards rushing, an average of 70.7 .7 yards per game, fifth best in the FBS. And despite losing at home to unranked TCU yesterday, the Texas Longhorns managed to stay in the Associated Press top 25, dropping 13 spots to 22. Following the loss, QB1 Sam Ellinger said the university deserves better. Now their next opponent, Oklahoma, fell out of the poll for the first time since September 2016 after losing at Iowa State last night. OU went from 18 to not ranked. The Sooners will head into the Red River rivalry Saturday as an unranked team for the first time since 2005. And Texas A&M also dropped in the AP poll following their 52-24 loss to number two Alabama. A&M fell eight spots to number 21. Next, A&M will face fourth-ranked Florida and their 2-0 mark. That game is set for Saturday morning morning at 11 at Kyle Field. Guys? A lot coming up yep. to be nervous weekend. about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was nervous at the end of that uh, Cowboys-Browns game, no doubt about Oh, yeah, they made they you sweat. They were going to turn into the clowns. <laughs> Congrats. We're happy for you, though. Me too. We'll be right back. <laughs> Another look at your day tomorrow, 58 in the morning, 86 in the afternoon, plenty of sunshine and that theme of cool mornings, warm afternoons that will continue all week, but humidity will stay in check so it won't be overly muggy out there. And that is always a good thing, guys. Our director, Will, back in production, called me out for socks. So, what is that? <laughs> and getting the right answer. So here we go. Pumpkins uh, versus skeletons. Yeah, okay. those are Halloween themed socks, but uh, not a very Halloween feeling uh, uh, forecast out there, that's for sure. <laughs> no, it's really not. So okay, who? the dancing skeletons are yours. Yeah, that's right, I've worn yeah. them. Yeah, you remember those. <laughs> I like Larry's new skeletons, though. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, little pumpkins with a black cat. 
Yeah. I like the I like cool. the black cat ones. I'm gonna say Larry wins because I like the black cats. Yeah, yeah I, I I repeated so. Yeah, <laughs> so that's not cheating. Larry but, but a goodie, Tim. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> that's all of our time. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight. It might be on a little bit late after that NBA game, which is on a little earlier. But then Blackish is on. Then we'll be on. See you then. Stay with.